Okay, here we are. I'm going to be the partially headless teacher for a minute. <laughs> All right, so we have y equals secant of 1 half x. And keep writing on myself. I hate when that happens. Let me clean up a little bit and move it down. Y equals secant x over 2. All right. You'll recall that graphing secant is different than graphing tangent and cotangent. No more snakes, but we're in U land. So we're going to take the idea and look for some help. And this time we remember that was secant x equals 1 over what? Cosine x. So we're going to draw the cosine of 1 half x. That's what x over 2 means. So when we, when we draw that, we are going to see that our period is going to be 4 pi. And when we do that, it's going to go from 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. And our helper is the cosine, so it's going to start at the top at 1, and it's going to bottom out at 2 pi and go back up. Sort of like a day. I think of cosine like a, a time when you have a fairly good beginning of your day, then things go wrong, and by God's grace, you're back and you have your perspective back and it ends on a good note. So, good day, start, challenge, good, good perspective. So, this is what we're looking for. Alright, so now that is supposed to be crossing right at pi and 3 pi. Forgive my inaccuracy. Let's go ahead and put in the asymptotes. So the asymptote is at pi and 3 pi. And if it's at pi, 3 pi, then it's going to be every 2 pi, so like this. All right. So these are not the snakes, but the U's. So this U is going to come up and touch the valley that the cosine made. And this U is going to come down and touch the mountaintop. And they go on forever like that. So let me get out of your vision there. So see my U's here. Uh, that one kind of fell off the screen. I'll move it up on the next example. All right. You can go ahead and graph, while I'm erasing, you can go ahead and graph y equals cosecant 2x. y equals cosecant 2x. Don't wait for me. Don't be polite. Just barge on ahead. y equals cosecant 2x. Alright. Alright, let's see if I can catch up to you. y equals cosecant 2x. Alright, to graph that, your helper function is well, since cosecant x equals 1 over sine x, we are going to graph y equals sine of 2x to help us out. So the function has no period, I mean has no amplitude change, and this 2 will cause the function to have a period of 1 and you can check that out. And the sine curve will start here and come back down and end up where it started, like that. Now we have to draw in the asymptotes. 
So they're going to be wherever this crosses the x-axis. So there's one here, one here, one here. So our U's come down and meet our mountaintops and our valleys. So, and this will continue in like manner. So that's y equals sine, I mean y equals cosecant of 2x. Alright, hopefully you recall all that stuff. Let me just briefly mention the other things that you have to graph, and that's the inverse trig functions, but we don't really change their period or change anything about them. We just, use, we just graph them straightforwardly. So it's pretty much memory work. And all of you have, gra have signed off on your passports on that, so I won't spend much time on it. So you have to know y equals c sine inverse of x, a little one there, y equals cosine inverse of x, and I'll put this one in the other form, arctan of x. Recall, when you say arc or sine inverse, it's the same thing. So you have to be used to both notations. So the sine function, the arc sine function, if you recall, it used to go up to 1 and down to minus 1. And those were flipped. So now you have a minus 1 and a 1 on the x-axis. And it was pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And this starts abruptly and ends abruptly in such a rude fashion. All right, so that's the sine, inverse sine. Here's the inverse cosine. Very similar, except where it happens. It goes from 0 to pi. And it starts here and goes like that. Abrupt beginning and abrupt ending. So, and lastly, tangent. It goes up to pi over 2, down to negative pi over 2, where the has horizontal. It's previously... Um, of horizontal vertical asymptotes have become horizontal and it snakes on through like that forevermore. All right, so those you just have to be able to create on demand. So, all right. The last thing, I might have room without erasing. I want you to recall how to actually do inverse trig problems. So that's their graphs. We learned how to do functions like this cosine of the arc sine of negative 3 over 5. And if you recall, when we did that, we went into the inner chamber and we did arc sine of negative 3 over 5. So that means we had to find an angle that had this as its sine. So this is opposite. This is hypotenuse. So it's not going to happen in this quadrant. I'm not going to have a negative opposite. So I'm going to have to drop down here. So I'm going to have to erase to set this up. So if you would work ahead of me, please. Set up the triangle that has a sine of negative 3 over 5. Nasty to erase. Nasty, nasty. Alright, here we go. Moving it up where it's in full view. I'm going to find out that it's down in this quadrant. You'll recall arc sine is in the first or the fourth. So when it's negative, we're going to look in the fourth where our side opposite can go down and side hypotenuse is always positive and it's a five. So using the Pythagorean theorem, you can come up with the value of that side and it is four. So you can confirm that. And that is, now we have the angle, even though I don't know what it is, I have the angle drawn so I can go ahead and take the cosine of that triangle that I've drawn. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So what's the adjacent? 4. I don't know if that shows up. This is my smudge. Let me clar clarify it. Alright, there's, uh, there's my 4. 
So adjacent over hypotenuse is 4 over 5. And that's the entire answer right there, 4 fifths. So do you recall those? You did a whole section on those, but it's been a while. But you were very good at them. And it was one of those homeworks where it was very boring to check. Right, 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 right. All right, I hope your test is as boring. All right, so would you try this one? And I probably will just show you this answer to this one in the morning. So I'd like you to do the cosine of the arctan of two. Cosine of the arctan of two. Just like we did this one. Cosine of the arctan of two. All right, that will give you some practice, and some of you probably already started your test. It's due on Friday, so I hope so. These are just examples to uh, firm it up, bring it back to mind, and boost that score. All right, that's all for now. Have a good rest of your evening. Bye.